Hey YouTube, how y'all doing today? Today I have an exclusive for you in English. What I'm about to show you, you might see it in French, you might see it in Spanish, uh, you might even see it in Russia. But in the English speaking universe, this is going to be exclusive. And the question you're asking is, what is this exclusive? It is the 5 in 1 Tactical Havoc 30. Okay? Now the Havoc 30 is a new backpack. It came out about. I want to say March, it was earlier this year, and I got this a while ago. And so, what I want to give you is like, basically having used this now for a while, to give you uh, as an exclusive, right, I want to get this information out quickly, some uh, thoughts and stuff on it. So, I just want to point out, you know, in this backpack, it's been like three times I've tried to film this, but I've had technical difficulty each time. There was a time at the gym, a time when I was hiking, using it in the rain, and now this, this makes the third time. So I'm going to give you the review. And then, as you watch this video, you'll see footage inserted from those two other events. And this will help you understand what I like about this backpack, and what I don't, and what you should, what I recommend you consider in your backpack purchase, and your gear purchases. So let's look over some specs. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. First, it is proudly made in Vietnam. If you buy this for 501 Tactical's website, it is about $139. Of course, you can find it cheaper from other retailers and stuff. You have, um, if you notice here, this is like a low profile backpack. It doesn't have as much Powell's Webbing as your Rush series of backpacks. It has more than the Covert series, which has like none. You got like these daisy chain style loops here. You have this new um, laser cut Molly style. 501 has their own patented material for this, and I want to show you here. Look how thin that is, okay? See how my fingers right there? It's very thin. It's almost like paper thin. But uh, I'll comment more about this. So, and it's 27 and a half liters. It's kind of funny because 501 Tactical says it's the Havoc 30, but when you look on the specs on their webpage, they call it a 27 and a half liter backpack. I don't know. Not important, but I just want you to be informed, right? And on this, you have a single strap down here that you can put your jacket, your bedroll, or something like that, okay? Now, 5-in-1 Tactical likes to advertise this as their, it's like a do-all bag, a hiking backpack, an action bag. And in fact, if you watch 5-in-1 Tactical commercials, you got guys running down steps, doing cool stuff with this, right? And so, having done some of that stuff, um, let's start with the outside, work my way in, and we'll get to all that cool stuff and how it works in the real world. Okay. So starting on the outside, if you've seen any of the commercials or videos before on this backpack, you know, just like the Rush series, it has a stuff it sack. And just like the Rush, or Rush 72, sorry, and just like the Rush 72, you have these buckles here that you can detach to open this up to make this fall down to get access to your backpack. Or you can just keep it like this and shove your gym shoes or whatever you'd like in here. But do note, unlike the Rush, there's no webbing here to keep this in place. So it's very essential. Whatever you put in here, it just has to be cinched down tight or it's going to fall out to your left or to your right on this. Also, um, notice the buckles here. This is their new, it's their version of a new quick release. They promise, in fact they even say this in the video, I promise these are better than Fast Textile. What you're supposed to do is put a little pressure on, slip it through, and out it goes. And do this on both sides. To be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of this. I prefer the fast textile buckles. What I've noticed is, if you notice I'm kind of like fumbling with this, it seems like, how can I describe this? Okay, in order to get this done, you have to have some pressure. And you got to be able to lift up and get that out. But sometimes that seems more difficult to do, whereas with fast tech buckles, you just push them on the side, it's done. Real simple. The advantage I can see in this, though, is I hope this camera picks this up. Let me try to make sure I'm really getting this in here. I got sun in my face, so sorry if uh, I screwed this up on camera because I can't see the camera right now very well. All right, this buckle takes up more real estate. And because it takes up more real estate, it should give you a better, there we go, a better hold, right? You shouldn't have as many accidental um, unbucklings. Because with Fast Tech, and I've had this happen before, if you have a bad buckle, 
and you have too much weight, the buckle will come out, and then your like back strap, your like strap or something will come off. Like the quick release, yeah, the quick release strap or will come off. But because you have this extra real estate here to hold it on there, you don't have to worry about that. That's a plus. But in terms of simplicity, the Fast Tech is quicker and easier. I find, having used this thing multiple times, just like the 501 Igniter before, it, which was the pioneer of this and the 501 Tactical. Yeah, it wasn't cool. Anyway, working on the outside, keeping with the theme, you do have uh, this new style sternum strap here, which I do like. I like how this simply, you can slide this out. You can slide it under here and adjust it up and down here. It works, no problems with that. Incidentally, it does use a fast tech style, just like your quick release. Right here uses fast tech style. The outside, again working with that, if you notice since I have it on the, the back side here, let's talk about this. This is supposed to be where the zero G plate, which is like armor plate you could put in here. And I find something weird about this. If you look at the Rush series of backpacks, or just many other competitors for that mine, they would have a zippered compartment here. And in that zippered compartment, let's get the glasses now, i got the lights in my face, the sun in my face. You can put your laptop computer in here, your documents, zip it up, it's secure, it's safe. This is not like that. As you can see, it's Velcroed, okay? And you got these holes in the bottom where it drains out. To be honest, there's only two other times I've seen this. Army, where they had a pocket slips in here and this here, and cheap tactical backpacks. Like the knockoff made in China ones that you see. Those are the ones I see with that. And so when I say that, to be honest with you, I don't like this. So, and you'll find, because one, it's like, you're supposed to be a premium company. Why go the cheap route? Why do something that cheap backpack companies would make? Make something better. And it also limits your storage options, which I'll get to in a second. So um, going with the outside here, let's turn around to the front. You have this hardening pocket here, which holds this. And yeah, this works. You know, I got an extra pair of sunglasses in here. Gives you the extra protection. Make sure you get the nice view in here. There you go. See, it's nice and fleece. Kind of big. You can put whatever you want in there. Cables, iPod, whatever floats your boat. You have this exterior admin pocket with the 501 Tactical logo right there. Kind of nice. And I got to tell you, this is not a good admin pocket. Watch this. So what you do is, you have the zipper here. You unzip it. Now let me see if you can see the problem with this. Okay, here it is. I got a pin here, and I got my checkbook here. I don't know if it's, you notice, but dude, seeing in here, it's hard. I can only see this narrow slit, so if I want something, I gotta sit here and move it to the left, move it to the right, put it down like this. Oh, there it is. And of course, that limits your accessibility too. It's really not a good design. The only reason I can see 501 Tactical did this because this is supposed to be low profile. If they went with a more traditional, let's say, square admin pocket, the zipper would be up here, down. It would take up more space. By keeping it this way, they could literally cut corners on this. See, they can cut corners and make a smaller profile, literally. Uh, as far as this goes, this will hold like your pouches and stuff, but according to the same video that said they promised this is easier to use, they said this is almost the same strength as traditional uh, pals webbing. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I believe that. And I'm not willing risking it. When, I, when my Rush 24 sits in the back of my car a lot, I use it as a gym bag, my office bag, whatever. So if I'm like, if I'm in the front of the car, here's me driving. And I'm at, and let's say I'm stopped in the parking lot and hey, or I got to stop like real quickly. I want to grab my bag to say get my glasses out or a drink. I can literally put my finger in the PAL's webbing and pull it forward me to reach and it doesn't hurt the backpack along with many other brands because the stitching is good and the material is strong. With this though, I really don't know how well I trust it. It's doing okay here right now, but I don't, I, this is light too, but over and over and over again, I don't know. I will let you all decide how much, you want to, uh, how much confidence you put in that. But on a more positive note about this, on the exterior, you got these side pockets. And this will hold a 40 canteen, clean canteen, 40 ounces, along with a cup, GSI Glacier Cup. It does just fine, though it will eat up the volume on the inside. Keep that in mind. Let me put 
this over here. On this side, I'm going to highlight a feature uh, as soon as I can see. you got to use two hands to get this thing unbuckled. Good grief. There we go. Notice how you got this pistol magazine pocket here. This is supposed to be for a magazine. What I used it on a hiking trip was for my tent stakes. So if you don't have a pistol magazine to put there, like I don't, you can at least put something else there. A candy bar, a flashlight, you know, something. You got this little pocket. So, um, also, I see anything else we need to cover? Oh, yes. You have this belt. Now, let me put this back on and show you something about this belt. The belt is removable. Okay, there's a Velcro holder in it, which is okay. And you can tuck the belt back in here. That's cool. It will tuck up inside to your water reservoir compartment. Ta -da. Okay. So now you got this um, new floating belt system of theirs. Let me bring this camera down a little bit. Okay, hold on. Okay, so you got this float. So these pockets here are going to float. It works, but it's annoying. Because that means sometimes these things are going to fall here. Then they'll fall here. And instead of just having one piece of night, like, you know, padded nylon going all the way around, you've got to play and tinker with this. It's just kind of messy. It might save on material. It might save on, it might save 501 tactical money and weight, but it's just clumsy. Then you got these, in my opinion. Now, these pockets are kind of funny. There's a, watch this. You have this tab here, right? And mind you, these pockets are supposed to hold a pistol magazine. So your instinct is going to be to pull up on the tab to get your magazine out. But that's not how these work. What you're supposed to do is pull down on the tab. See, pull down. Pull this up, then pull out your magazine. I find this funny because this is supposed to be a tactical bag, right? Like, you're actually supposed to use this for, you know, combat if you had to, right? Because it's got the pistol magazines here. So if I got like a 9mm or a 45, whatever, I'm supposed to literally take two hands, open this, pop this. Where do I put my mat? Where do I put my pistol at? Right? Where's it go? So um, that's you know that's kind of like not cool. I think I could be wrong. Maybe Five One Tactical has a different solution. They had something different in mind, and they have a better explanation than I do. But just having used this, it just seems odd. It's not intuitive. But uh, let's talk about, so we talked about the exterior. We talked about all that. Real quick, I want to talk about the interior. Now, in the interior, the, the Havoc is very uh, sparse compared to the Rush series. It doesn't have as many uh, pockets as an organization, which some people might like because it does lower the weight and it simplifies it. I have mixed feelings about this. Here's the inside. You have one mesh pocket here. You have this pocket here for organizing your gear. Let's put this back up here, okay? I have my Bundeswehr kit mat here, which it will fit in here, does just fine on that. You have, see, this slightly padded pocket here. And this is where your laptop's supposed to go. Personally, like I said in my other videos, I like to have my laptop here, so I can use the padding here to protect it and I can just put wet sock, you know, wet stuff in here. You might have a different opinion. You might like it different. And I guess you could also put an ESAPI one of the zero G plates from 51 Tactical here. That could work for you. And by the way, you can see the stitching. Remember I told you that magazine pocket? There's the stitching for it on the inside. For those who are curious. Um, I will say it's overall it is stitched well together. It's got five or it's got <laughs> five on one. It's got YKK zippers. They work. Um, as far as comfort goes, this is a comfortable pack. Um, compared to, like, I've always complained about the Rush series. You know, you got this nylon on the Rush series that always rubs against me, gets caught on stuff. Here, they have mesh. 501 Tactical has been moving away from that all nylon backpack, as in the Rush series, and more of a, a hybrid of, well, I won't say hybrid, but more to the mesh, copying what other companies have done. And I can't complain. Uh, this doesn't feel like cheap. It's kind of stiff, right? Which is good. That means it's not going to like easily pinch, get torn. That's good. Shoulder straps are very stiff, and that could be good and bad because like when you put your backpack on, 
this won't bend very much, okay? So your arms are just gonna get, you're gonna feel resistance when you do something like this. But I have to say, I've done sprints with this, like literally going on a sprint. It held, it con the contour of it went well with the body. Instead of flopping around, it like stuck with my body, even without the belt. That's a plus with this backpack. I've used it in the gym for uh, CrossFit. I'd put some 25 pound weights in here. That way I'd have extra weight on my back and extra weight on like the sleds and all the other stuff I was pushing with this. You'll see it in the video what I'm talking about. It works fine. Uh, out in the rain. I don't know if for you. Yeah, I had a downpour. When you, you'll see it in the video. I don't know if you can call that fair. There we go. But it might be water resistant, but it's that. definitely not waterproof, okay? Your stuff will get soaked really yeah, good. Like I said, it's a little bulky. Uh, what else can, can I say about it? A little difficult to dog on it. This is a funny bag. Hey, it, it works like a charm. And like you, you don't have to carry an extra tote with it. You know, like, I mean, it really it doesn't seem to exceed so. anything left. So, hey, it doesn't make a good EDC it, It's bag. a good it piece of kit. It works. It's I hope you enjoyed this. A tactical bag. A low profile. Eh, maybe. Hiking bag. I should comment as a hiking bag. It's like so-so. It's got the comfort. It doesn't have anything stiff here. So you're not going to be able to put heavy weight in here, so this, you want to do a lighter job. But like this, I put my camera tripod, the very one that's holding this uh, camera right now, making this video. Like, I walked like 300 meters and it fell out. And I had to go back up the trail and go get it. So, you know, that's not cool. It doesn't really... So if you got anything solid, like a tube or something, don't put it here. It's going to come out. Which, again, you know, 5 Tactical, I guess they want to reduce weight, costs, or something, but not a well thought out design. So here's what I would recommend. You know, I'm kind of like jumping around here because there's like so many things this thing does do right, so many things it doesn't do right, it can do this, it can't do this. Here's my personal opinion on this. If you want something low profile, maybe for your urban environment, I guess it'll work for you. But don't count on those having that EDC bag, you know, it doesn't have the good access you want. It doesn't have all the pockets you want for organization. <laughs> Uh, if you're looking for something like a hiking bag, it will do light hiking. It is comfortable, about it, but you're not going to be able to carry a lot and do a lot, in my opinion, and with what I work with. Although it will carry this, this, and a few other gear just fine. The one, and of course, you got this annoying belt here. But you know, it is detachable. You take off the Velcro, take it off, or you can just shove it right up here. take a little bit more time it'll be nicer and neater but you get the idea right you can just put it in there same with this one shove it out of the way that's kind of cool here's what I find the best thing to use for is an athletic bag okay you want to do some running with it it will cinch up it'll be comfortable go for it you know put your hydration pocket you know, like your camel back inside here go running with it CrossFit you know 5-1 tackles get into CrossFit you know they use their tack plate carriers uh, tack plate carriers for CrossFit games now, something like this will fit over something like that. And this profile will be really good with it. If you're like, if you want something, like I said, I put 25 pound weights in here, right? And so if you want to do some like pull ups, this will stay to the body. It hangs well. It's good for that. Uh, you know, you got to your shoes, right? Your gym shoes or something. In the stuff. It's, but that's where I think the best thing is going to perform at. Other fields. It's, I think 5-1 Tactical is trying to reach out and do too many things with it instead of focusing on something good. So anyway, that's my opinion. Um, would I consider this a win? I personally do not consider it a win because when I think about the way I use my gear and equipment, it's just weird. There's just too many shortcomings. It kind of frustrates. But if I was looking for something specific, like, oh, like I really want to spend 140 bucks on a, I don't know, CrossFit backpack or something, you know, something like that nature or something to go running with, eh, this might work for you then. That's where it worked for me. So anyway, thank you for watching this. Like, share, subscribe. I'd like to hear your comments. Thank you for watching this.